Hello, I'm Mike Cutlass. I'm the Chief Academic Officer at the American Society of Radiologic Technologists. Uh, really happy to be with you today to talk about how to better equip CT technologists with the increasing complexity of modern CT scanners. Uh, now, in, uh, just so that you know, I'm not a CT uh, technologist myself. Um, I'm the Chief Academic Officer, like I said, at the American Society of Radiologic Technologists. So what qualifies me to talk about this subject? Um, well, honestly, not much. But um, what I want to report on today is uh, some of the research that we've done at ASRT, looking back uh, historically at, uh, at the nature of, of CT technologists uh, five to 10 years ago, um, and then moving forward to today to see what has changed and what the needs are for the future. So one of the things that we do at ASRT is a great deal of survey research, and I think you'll find that there's some data in here that's uh, very interesting. So let's go to the next slide. Uh, going back to 2007, ASRT and the ARRT, the American Registry of Radiologic Technologists, put together a CT consensus conference or a CT consensus meeting. The, uh, the idea was that we know that CT was increasing in medical imaging. We knew that a lot of other modalities besides just radiography were getting into CT, uh, most notably radiation therapy and nuclear medicine technology. And so we wanted to look at what the nature of CT was and um, where it was going and what we needed to do to help uh, drive CT use in the, the right direction. So as I said, this was sponsored by ASRT and ARRT. Uh, there was two on-site meetings, one in August of 2007 and one in April of 2008. And 32 uh, people took place, uh, took part in this meeting. Um, people from the Society of Nuclear Medicine, the ACR, uh, AIRS, which is the Association of Educators in Imaging and Radiologic Sciences, the accreditation bodies, the JRCERT and JRCNMT, the NMTCB, and also some um, participants from the US Navy. We had physicians on the panel, uh, vendors, as well as uh, representatives from the medical physicist community. The goal was really to serve as the groundwork for discussion, recommendations, and future action in addressing the increasing use of CT and its impact on the role radiologic technologists play in ensuring high quality patient care as medical imaging continues to evolve. Like I said, we know that in uh, nuclear medicine, CT was being utilized more and more in PET CT. and. Um, uh, and with um, radiation therapy, radiation therapists were using it for CT simulation. And we also knew it was becoming almost a primary uh, modality for the evaluation of trauma, uh, for the evaluation of certain types of pathology in the, uh, in the medical arena. So uh, where were we and where were we going? Another um, uh, project that we're gonna, I'm gonna report on here real quick, um, is the CT Educational Needs Assessment, which we did a little bit before the CT consensus meetings began. This was a survey that was sponsored by the ASRT and was sent out in 2005 to 10,000 CT technologists. Um, now, they were certified and non-certified. So what we did is we asked people, um, what's your primary discipline that you're working in? and that's where we got our sample from. So some of them had gone through certification, the certification process, and some had not. On that, we got a 20% response rate and almost equal division between technologists that were working in rural areas, suburban areas, and in urban areas. Okay, so what are some of the lessons that we learned back then? Well, first of all, we learned that there is a need for increased education in computed tomography. Um, radiographics way back in 2002, and I'm sure these numbers have changed since then, since this is almost 10 years old, but CT accounted for 13 of the procedures back then and 70% of patients' radiation exposure um, from, from medical radiation. Um, we know that those numbers have even increased since, the, since then. Uh, we knew that, uh, or we found that there's an increasing number of pediatric and adolescent exams being completed in uh, CT technology, uh, and 68% of CT technologists believe that CT education should be increased in entry-level programs. Just to give you a little background uh, for people who might not be familiar with it, the, 
the normal route for somebody to become a CT technologist is first to go through an educational training program in radiography and then to move into CT technology either through on-the-job training or through a CT uh, program, um, standalone program. But the fact that 68% of CT technologists believe that CT education programs should increase their C CT education, um, that tells us that people probably didn't feel totally secure when they first started learning CT and they wish there was a little bit more background information or foundational knowledge in CT before they got into it. On to the next slide. Uh, the radiography curriculum that we currently have um, has a very small component of computed tomography uh, content in it. Um, I think it's interesting to note, and I'll probably mention this again a couple times, that in other countries, Canada and Great Britain are probably the most uh, prominent, CT is considered a core part of their entry-level curriculum. So when somebody graduates from one of those programs, they're prepared to do CT. Um, in our curriculum, what we try to do is give a little bit of foundational knowledge in CT, but by no means is a, a new graduate prepared to uh, start working in a CT department immediately. Um, they're going to need to go through additional training. Um, this is just, like I say, the table of contents, but you can see there's only three pages that um, are concerned with the basic principles of computed tomography. Um, and the curriculum is kind of up to the educators to decide how much emphasis they're going to put on this. Um, there are some programs that might spend all of two or three hours on uh, covering these topics on computed tomography, while other programs might spend uh, hundreds of hours, um, including some clinical contact hours uh, with, with computed tomography. So there's, there's quite a range out there of how people are, are using this curriculum to teach CT in their entry-level programs. So in that curriculum, there's some things like looking at the different generations of CT scanners out there, what some of the major components are and how it operates. So data acquisition, quality factors, post-processing, that sort of thing. Uh, and radiation protection is also a key component of the radiography curriculum. But you can tell just from those three bullet points there that we're not getting too in-depth in the entry-level curriculum in terms of CT. Next slide uh, shows a little bit more about the clinical components that are required in, um, in the entry-level curriculum. Uh, right now, the ART doesn't require any kind of um, uh, clinical uh, competencies for entry-level technologists. And in the ASRT curriculum, there are only three optional basic computed tomography exams, the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. These could be with or without contrast. Um, totally optional for the program, whether they want to do this or not. And one of the things that we'll look at here real quick is the difficulty that programs have in, in even getting time on scanners with their students. So the next slide, um, just to kind of reinforce that the content specifications that the American Registry of Radiologic Technologists have are basically the outline for the certification exam. And for post-primary exams, for things after the initial radiography exam, um, there, if someone's going to become certified in CT, there's a great deal of clinical competencies that must be demonstrated. But for entry-level radiographers, there are no required clinical competencies in CT. In fact, um, I believe the ARRT is in the process of removing any questions re related to CT from their um, entry-level exam. So students won't even see that on, on the entry-level exam, anything related to CT. So the next slide tells us, based on some of our research, one of the things that we, we know that technologists are telling us that they need to be able to be competent with CT uh, in their clinical sites. Um, we know that educational programs are telling us that clinical sites are needed uh, for technologists to be able to get the clinical time on the scanners to become proficient, to become competent. Um, obviously, there's a major problem. The CT Consensus Conference is telling us this. 
<clears throat> there's a major problem in securing clinical sites. If you think about it, the most important thing happening on a CT scanner are patient exams. Um, so the staff need to be able to perform exams on the patients and uh, to do that well. Um, if, some, if a radiologic technologist wants to become a certified CT technologist, they have to demonstrate um, over 100 uh, clinical competencies. They have to be able to perform those in front of a, a certified CT technologist to be able to even qualify to sit for the certification exam. So they need to have time on CT scanners. Students in entry-level programs, nuke med programs, radiation therapy programs, they want time on the uh, CT scanners. So the radiation therapists who are um, already practicing as radiation therapists but want to learn how to do CT sim, they need time on it. And nuclear medicine technologists who might be working with PET CT also need some time on those uh, clinical scanners. So there's a great deal of pressure placed on CT departments to not only complete exams but to provide um, clinical sites for people to get the entry-level education and clinical competencies that they need uh, to become certified. Um, right now there's only four known CT programs in the country where somebody could go to and, uh, and take a CT course and be able to get those C CT competencies. So um, when you think about how many people are doing CT in only four programs, um, that's not very many. And of those four programs, there's currently no accreditation for CT education programs. So once again, there could be a varying um, levels of, um, of uh, competence and various levels of uh, expertise when it comes to uh, teaching CT. So CT needs assessment tells us that 95% of CT technologists out there who are performing CT receive that training on the job. So receive that training as a train the trainer. Sat down next to a CT technologist, learned how to do um, the exams, and um, in some cases, we're probably talking a six to 12 month process for somebody to learn how to do CT, just um, almost through a, osmosis in some ways, and sitting, uh, sitting down next to a CT technologist and, and working through what they need to know. The next slide tells us that um, one of the other things we know is that there's not enough certified CT technologists in the United States. Now, in 2008, we looked at the American Registry of Radiologic Technologists data and saw that there are approximately 50,000 technologists in the country, a little bit more than 50,000, who tell us that they perform CT procedures primarily in the United States. There's probably more than that that are completing CT exams, but 50,000 a little more than 50,000 are saying that their primary role is as a CT technologist. Of that 50,000 number, in 2008, approximately 21,000 hold that CT certification. Why is that important? Well, you know, ASRT and I, th I think the profession feels that certification, even though it's not perfect, is a really good measure of competence and foundational competence in CT, that this would be the foundational um, level of what we'd expect of a, a CT technologist to know. Um, so 21,000 out of the 50 are certified. That leaves 29,000 in 2008 that were performing CT without certification. When we dove deeper into the numbers and asked why those 29,000 technologists were not certified, the three main reasons that they gave us was number one, um, of course, money being a big motivator. Um, being certified didn't lead to increased pay in their facilities, so they didn't really see the need that, um, from that side to, uh, to seek certification. It was not required of their employer or of the state. Um, in 51% of the cases, that's why technologists didn't do it. And they could answer in multiple, um, give us multiple reasons. That's why these percentages add up to more than 100. And 34% of the technologists felt like the training they got on the job in their facility really validated their competence. Um, they didn't feel that there was really a need to go through the certification uh, process because what they had gone through in their, um, uh, in their institution really validated what they were able to do and they felt competent after going through that training. Um, 
when we look at the distribution of those CT technologists in the country, um, there are fewer CT certified technologists in rural areas. Most of them were um, located in urban areas, um, as you'd expect, where there was large uh, academic institutions and, um, and large medical imaging facilities. So going on to the next slide. Um, this is actually my favorite slide because this shows us what's changed in the last four years since those numbers first came out in 2008. Um, the bar graph on the left-hand side shows that in 2008, what we were just looking at, approximately 54% of the technologists working in CT were not certified, and 46% were certified. But those numbers have basically switched in the last um, four years. So now there are approximately 64% of CT technologists practicing in CT that are certified, and uh, 36, 37 percent practicing in CT that are not certified. If you look at the chart up above, you can see that uh, in 2008 there were a total of 52,613 technologists who told us that CT was their primary um, uh, modality that they practiced in. And in 2012, 60,359 people told us that CT was their primary um, modality. So the number of CT technologists has increased, but along with that, the number of certified CT technologists have, has increased, and um, we consider that to be a very, very good thing. The next slide, um, most of this um, data comes from our CT consensus conference, but a little bit from our CT needs assessment as well, is that CT is becoming a core skill. 68% um, of CT technologists believe that CT education should be increased in entry-level programs. These are people working in CT, people that feel that they maybe weren't quite as prepared as they should have been or could have been. Um, now, just a word of support for the educators out there. The entry-level radiography curriculum is quite robust. There's a lot of uh, content in there. And a lot of it is actually transferable over to CT, um, especially the radiation safety components. But um, a lot of technologists tell us anecdotally that when they got a job, uh, when they were a student, they graduated, got a job, maybe working the night shift, the expectation was that they would be um, being able to work in CT and maybe doing a CT head um, in a trauma situation or CT abdomen, CT chest, that sort of thing. Uh, from the American Registry's point of view, um, I'm not going to speak for them, but my, um, my sense is that since they have a standalone certification exam in CT, um, you know, they don't want to add a lot of content to the entry level curriculum because it's con cause CT is considered a, an additional modality, something that you would go back and uh, get additional training and additional clinical training for. Um, we also asked at the CT consensus, so I think this was back in 2008, um, within five years will entry-level radiographers be expected to perform CT and 50%, 56% of the attendees at that conference felt like yes, that would be an expectation of new graduates, and as I said, anecdotally, we're finding that to be true. Uh, CT simulation is a core skill in radiation therapy. I think anybody working in the radiation therapy biz probably knows that, um, that the fluoroscopy simulators are going away, and uh, CT simulation and um, learning the cross-sectional anatomy, that sort of thing, is becoming a core skill in radiation therapy. Um, same is true in nuclear medicine, where hybrid imaging, PET-CT, is also uh, becoming a core skill. One of the questions we asked at the CT consensus was, within five years, will radiation therapy technologists and nuclear medicine technologists perform diagnostic CT scans? Um, in the case of nuclear medicine, 23% said yes, and radiation therapy, 31% said yes. Once again, anecdotally, we're finding this to be true. Um, we're finding that a lot of uh, imaging departments and uh, therapy departments um, don't want to take the patient off the table if they're already on the table for a, a, a CT simulation for radiation therapy, for example, but they're scheduled later in the day for a CT scan of their liver, 
why not go ahead and, and get that done while they're on the table? Um, there are radiation therapists that are dual certified in CT, and there are nuclear medicine technologists that are dual certified in CT as well. So with the appropriate training, um, uh, many institutions are finding that, uh, that this is something that benefits patient care and also makes their departments more efficient. Moving on to the next one, um, just in terms of regulations, um, right now there's no federal regulations that exist for CT certification or for licensure. Um, there are three states, Colorado, Wisconsin, and Oregon, that do have CT certification requirements and licensure requirements in their state. But keep in mind that there are still six states and the District of Columbia that have no licensure of any kind except for uh, the Mammography Quality Standards Act um, that are in place. Now, MIPA is, is kind of helping to change this a little bit. Um, the IAC or requires that the technical director be certified so that there's at least one certified CT technologist in every CT department. The ACR recommends post-primary certification and the, the Joint Commission hasn't really told us exactly what the requirements are for certification uh, as it relate, relates to MIPA. Okay, the next slide talks about CT needs. So this is what the technologists are telling us, and this is kind of a summary slide too, of um, what they really need to, uh, uh, to provide positive and competent uh, patient care in the CT department. So first of all is creating a common lexicon, um, a common terminology, common protocols, um, and including everybody, radiologists, physicians, RTs and especially vendors. Um, anybody who works around digital imaging knows that there's quite a bit of um, uh, variation between vendors. And the same thing is kind of true with CT technology and CT um, equipment that um, vendors call the same type of um, process by a different name depending on the type of equipment that you have. So trying to um, genericize some of that, making the language vendor neutral is something that uh, CT technologists are telling us that they would like to see. Secondly, they're telling us that they would like to see some sort of incentivization for CT certification, um, either through federal or state statute, through accreditation requirements, or based on what individual institutions do, requiring certification for advancement um, in terms of position or promotion, or um, financial incentives as well. But right now they feel like there's really very little incentivization to uh, certification in the CT arena. And that uh, they'd like to see some sort of a educational gap being bridged. Um, there's a lot of pressure on clinical areas, as we stated, to, um, to provide that clinical education, to, um, to continue to do patient care at the same time. And we, you know, and they're telling us that they, for those uh, that are living in rural areas, that they have a hard time sometimes getting to um, appropriate training uh, in their area, that they might have to travel farther, longer distances to get to appropriate training, which is one reason that the ACR put together, I'm sorry, that the ASRT put together the CT basics uh, course several years ago to uh, try to provide foundational knowledge for technologists our main goal behind putting together this 10 module series was to help trainers become as efficient as they could be so that when a, if a technologist went through this course first and then um, showed up at the clinical site for their training that they would have a good foundational knowledge of key CT terms and uh, CT procedures and be able to hit the ground running and um, make their time with the technologist uh, um, training them as efficient as possible. Okay, and finally, vendor-led training is something that, um, that technologists are telling us is critically, com uh, critically important and feel like it's a critical component of their overall training. Um, the super user concept is what's universally employed out there, and if you're unfamiliar with that briefly, super user is somebody, uh, a vendor would come in, train one technologist or a couple technologists on the equipment, and then that technologist would be expected to um, to uh, speak with all the other technologists and train them in on how that equipment works. Um, 
This is obviously a time issue for managers. Managers are telling us they don't have time to send everybody to the vendor-led training, so that's why the super user concept is so important. Um, technologists are telling us that they have different learning styles as well, as well. Some would rather learn online, some would rather learn through reading, some learn better with hands-on, um, which is why ASRT put together a learning preference survey, and this is something we did on behalf of our Healthcare Industry Advisory Council and uh, the results will be made known to, uh, to the council, or what we call HICIAC, in uh, May of 2013. Um, we're looking at what technologists are telling us and maybe the difference between technologists and managers in terms of what they want for vendor-led training. But we know that our vendors are extremely important um, in providing the education that, that the CT technologists really need. So, that's basically it. Um, uh, just to kind of wrap up, um, you know, CT is a, a very rapidly changing landscape. Uh, technologists need additional education and we need to be as efficient as, efficient as possible with that education and with the training um, in, the, in the current uh, fiscal climate that we're in. Um, so whether it be online or in person, um, we need to uh, provide that education for the technologists uh, so that they can become certified, so that uh, our patients can be given exams in a safe and timely manner. Thank you very much.